Hello everybody and welcome to my presentation Siltest with Canoo for Software. My name is Markus Eggenberger and I'm a manager at Vector where I'm responsible for the virtualization of software SUTs and their integration with our testing tools. Today I'm going to show you the benefits of incorporating virtual environments in the development and testing of your software and how you can easily set up such virtual environments using Canoo for Software. Furthermore, I'm going to show you how the ecosystem of Canoo for Software and VTest Studio helps you crafting quality software so that you can ship with confidence. When you're developing an embedded device, for example, an IoT or a smart device, you have pretty much two choices for your tests. You can test individual parts of your software early and directly on the host PC that you're developing on. And you can test the final integrated system directly running on the target device. In practice, you will need both. You will need the system level tests to make sure that your product meets its requirements. And you want to add unit tests to make sure that you have tested crucial parts of your software before you move to the fairly costly system level tests. In practice, there's a fundamental gap between those two types of tests, which leaves quite a big gap between them. If you think about the unit tests, uh, in this case, you take an individual function out of it, its context and run it in some test harness. This test harness applies input values to the functions and checks if the output was processed correctly. On the other hand, when you think about the system level tests, in this case, your software runs autonomously and freely on the target device. This means that it continuously executes its event loop, processing input data and generating new output value, thus having some dynamic aspects to it, which can hardly be covered by unit tests. And in this case, virtual environments can help to bridge the gap. When we think about the test phases when employing virtual environments, we still start with the unit level tests because they are your bread and butter tests and ensure that what has been tested so far will continue to work even if modifications need to be done. But before you move to the target device, you can now employ virtual environments to execute system level tests directly on your host PC purely on a software basis. And this, of course, enables early and frequent system level testing. And when you then move to the target device testing, which you still will require at some point, you have quite a high confidence that your system will behave correctly and you will have a highly reduced number of tests that you execute on the target device. Let me now highlight some of the benefits that you have when employing virtual environments in your test phases. Like I just said, you have now the ability to test much earlier on the system level. Especially, you don't need the final target device to have been produced yet, and you can start early developing your software. And since you're no longer needing the target device, it is also much easier to make it a continuous part of your CI CT system. That is, you can run them directly whenever you commit some piece of code. Uh, you now have the ability to scale your system level tests because you can easily instantiate as many virtual environments as you need and you don't need to buy additional test rigs and target devices. Your test specification and execution becomes much simpler because then it's no longer the need to manually interact with special test hardware and you can precisely test the behavior of your SUT even in corner cases without having to consider uh, imprecisions that um, arise when you do some manual testing on the hardware device. Of course, fault diagnostics in the case of a failed test are much simpler because you can now debug directly on your host PC. One thing that is often uh, forgotten or neglected is that you now have the independence of backend services, which become more and more important if you think about IoT devices. This enables reproducible tests without the need to set up uh, test instances of your backend, and you can test multiple devices in parallel because you now you now use models for your backend devices and have therefore isolated tests. 
Last but not least, you can now test your SUT in critical or even fatal scenarios. For example, you can test backend outages or you can apply input values to your SUT that are outside of the range of its specification, which could, for example, fry your costly prototype device or damage its environment. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the virtual environments. In particular, let's start with the different kinds of virtual environments that we encounter. If we want to develop an IoT device, we have some software application that is running on that target device, and it is connected to its physical environment through a set of sensors and actuators. These sensors provide information about the physical information, such as temperature, ambient light, or things like the current pressure. On the other hand, the actuators, actuators allow your SUT to modify the environment and interact with it. In the simplest case, it could simply it could mean turning on or off a switch or activating a motor. IoT devices rarely operate completely in isolation. Instead, they often communicate, like I just said, with backend devices in the cloud. Uh, like with backend services in the cloud or with other devices also running some software. And since those are software applications themselves, we consider this the software system environment of our SUT. Okay, so how do we virtualize everything? We take a virtual machine and we put our software application into it. That is the easy part. And then we can use Canoe for Software to model our physical and software environment to, um, to virtualize our environment. So to connect them, we use we we connect uh, we connect the environments to our software application at its functional system interface. So what is the functional system interface? Simply said, it is the software interface that your SUT uses to interact with its environment. If you think about the physical environment, that often means the hardware abstraction layer of the IOs that are connected to your sensors. So this hardware abstraction layer are some convenience function that, functions that you can use in your software to operate on the sensors. And since we now want to use Canoe for software to model both the physical and the software system environment, we need some means to describe this functional system environment. And for this, we use the Vector Communication Description Language, or short VCDL. The VCDL is a language to model com communication at its communication. Uh, sorry, the VCDL is a language to model communication at the application level. And as such, it is independent of a concrete communication protocol. However, the artifacts that you can model with the VCDL can later be bound or mapped to a protocol, so you can make use of actual protocols. And since the VCDL is quite a critical uh, component when it comes to our SIL testing solution, I want to take this opportunity for a slight detour and show you some key aspects of the VCDL. Here we see the general structure or outline of a VCDL file. There, everything is grouped into a namespace. In a namespace, you can declare custom data types, such as enumerations or structures. And most importantly, you can declare your interfaces. These interfaces directly relate to the functional system interface that I talked about earlier. And once you've declared the interfaces, you can instantiate them as objects, which brings them to life in Canoe for Software. This is what you actually then interact with in Canoe for Software. So let's have a look at a few examples of how to model functional system interfaces. In the physical environments, we said that we have sensors, for example, a temperature sensor. And this provides current temperature values of our environment. Since we want to use Kindle for software to model or to act as our testing environment, we have to provide this data from Kindle for software. So for this, we declare an interface. Here it's called I temperature sensor, and it has one member for the temperature. We use the keywords provided data to indicate that this is data provided by Kindle and then becomes available in our SUT. It has a data type of uh, double here and a name temperature. Quite simple. 
In the opposite directions, we have the actuators, for example, the activation and deactivation of a switch. And this looks quite similar, only that we use a different keyword to indicate the different direction. So we have again an interface here called iSwitch actuator. And now we use the keyword consumed to indicate that this is nothing, uh, this is no data that Canoe uh, generates or provides. Instead, we can observe the data coming from our SUT because we want to see if this works correctly. So here we have consumed data of type bool, simple on and off, and we named it a switch state. In the software system environment, we have different, very different kinds of interfaces. We can have native IoT protocols such as MQTT, access some cloud service via an RPC call or function calls in general to any other software component. And to, um, to access these functionality also with Canoe, we also have the ability to model methods or declare methods uh, with the VCDL. For example, if your IoT device wants to access some weather service, we can declare here a provided method that gets our current weather forecast. And since it's a provided method, it means that it is a method that Canoe will provide and implement in a model there. And then it can be used in your SUT. Okay, so now we have some means to express the functional system interface in Canoe for Software, but we still have to connect uh, our environments with our software application. And for this, we use the SIL adapter. The SIL adapter is a piece of software that you can integrate into your software application, and this will establish a TCP IP connection to Canoe for Software and then allows the exchange of uh, data with the environments. So the SIL adapter is specifically generated for each functional system interface description. And once you have declared your functional system interface in the VCDL, you can import the VCDL file in Canoe for Software and generate a SIL adapter. Here, I have already uh, done this step. I've, in, I've uh, imported a VCDL with three sensors and I've added a SIL adapter here. You can configure the SIL adapter for the desired target language. Here, I've selected C++. And once we hit the big button on the bottom, the generate SIL adapter, all the code artifacts that we need to put into our uh, software application will be generated for me. So, what, is, uh, what are the necessary steps to integrate the SIL adapter with my application? Again, we have here a more complete VCDL. We have a room temperature control namespace with a sensor, which provides temperature values again. And when we have a look at the piece of software that we want to uh, modify to access Canoe for software, we might have a function get sensor value one here in our SUT, which returns the double value. And originally, this would act, uh, access the uh, hardware abstraction layer here, the HW read sensor value function, which has been commented out. And instead, we replace this to a call to our SIL adapter that has been generated especially uh, directly for our purpose. To access the SIL adapter, we uh, use the namespace room temperature control here. And in this namespace, we find our object sensor one. And since sensor one is of type I sensor, which has a temperature value that is provided by Canoe, we can dire directly read this temperature value in our SUT and use this and return this to the caller of the get sensor value one. In the other direction, if we want to observe our suits behavior, we have the consumed data interface here for a heating state. And in this case, we might have a function in our SUT to enable heating, which again accesses the hardware abstraction interface. And here again, um, we replace this to a call to our SIL adapter. Same procedure as again, we have our namespace room temperature control. And in this namespace, we find our heating object, which has a member heating state, which we can then uh, turn to on. For this, we use the enumeration value that has been previously declared in the VCDL file. So I think this is quite a nice way to model fairly intuitively your functional system interfaces. And I think it's also 
uh, fairly easy to integrate it with your source code because you find all the artifacts and keywords again uh, that you've declared in the VCDL in the SIL adapter so you can easily instrument your applications and connect them to Kinufa software. So now that we've connected this to Kinufa software, let's see uh, what the benefits are of employing Kinufa software for the development and the test of your applications. One cool feature is what we call the exploratory testing, where you can um, interact in a quite a natural way directly with your SUT. And Kinufa software offers quite a, uh, quite a couple of tools for that. For example, you can generate a custom panel that uh, directly relates to the input and outputs of your SUT. So here we have a room temperature control panel where we can stimulate our SUT using three sliders for the temperature values of the sensors that are read by the SUT. And we can observe the uh, heating state or the cooling state of our SUT. Sometimes you do not want to explicitly uh, generate a panel for your application. So for that, we have new in CNU 50, the application panel. And in the application panel, you can simply select any of your um, declared objects in the VCDL. You find the interfaces there, can select a method, set some input values, and then directly set a call uh, to go to your SUT. And you can observe what is done then. And of course, we have classics such as the signal generator, which can continuously generate input values such as sine curves. The other side of exploratory testing is, of course, the analysis. You want to see what happens in your SUT, and we got you covered there as well. A great feature is the trace window, which records each and every input value that goes to your SUT and any output value that is received from your SUT, which allows very, very detailed analysis. For a more easy overview of what has happened over the last uh, time in your SUT, you can use the graphic windows uh, to plot the output values. Or you can use things like the state tracker to observe the state of your uh, system. Once your software has reached a more mature state and you want to move more to automated tests, you can use VTest Studio to model uh, your tests. With VTest Studio, you have many possibilities to do so using very different, uh, using different programming, language, pre programming languages or even graphical notations. So for example, here you see the test sequence diagram editor, which is a great way to reason about your test coverage and make sure that all the different um, uh, sequences have been covered by your tests. And you also have the ability to use things like parameter sets and stimulation curves. And you can increase um, the test coverage by best practice design features. And last but not least, you have the traceability from system requirements to, to your test reports. Once you have modeled your uh, tests with VTest Studio, you can run them in Canu for software, and there you get direct feedback and immediate feedback about the current state of your tests, how far have they proceeded so far, what has, uh, was, what has worked and what has not worked. And after all your tests have been executed, you get a nice test report. Okay, now let me conclude my presentation on SIL test with Kenu for software. As you have seen, virtual environments can reduce time to market and increase code quality as they enable early and scalable tests at a system level. And since the tests are performed on a pure software basis, their specification and execution is simple and accurate. And even if a test case fails, you can debug directly in your IDE, which simplifies the fault diagnostics process. With the SIL adapter, you can connect your SUT directly to CANU for software, which gives access to a wide range of possibilities to stimulate your SUT and observe its behavior. And with VTest Studio, you have a powerful test authoring tool at your hands for the generation of automated tests. I'm now looking forward to your questions in our Q&A session. Thank you.